Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. It is my absolute delight to welcome you to the official YouTube channel of the Redeemed Christian Church of God of Roru Transport Hilton, Abuja. My name is Pekilia Ibiabuchi, and it is my belief that the video you're about to watch will bless your soul immensely and edify you. So if you have not subscribed, please do so so that you can continue to enjoy our content and continue to be blessed by it. God bless you. This morning I'll be talking about, briefly about, hindrances to acceleration, divine acceleration or divine speed. Now, according to the work, uh, according to the word of word that the Lord gave to us, and the word backing up this statement or this mandate, Isaiah chapter 5 from verse 19. So let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Now Romans chapter 9 from verse 28 For I will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a quick or a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Have you seen it there? Now when you see things two times in the scriptures. Now, it speaks of emphasis. It's not as if God likes to repeat things. And Paul was saying, when he was speaking, one of the epistles, he said to say the same thing again and again and again to you, it's not, it's, it sh sh should not be grievous. Why? So that ye might be established in the present truth in the present revelation, in the present, present mind, my present mind, what God wants to do in the now, or what God is doing in the now. So sometimes you see emphasis, emphasis, not because God just likes to repeat things, it's for the purpose of emphasis, so that you'll be established. And many other times you see Jesus will say, very, very, I say unto you, very, very, I say unto you. It's not because Jesus was a stammerer or is a stammerer, but just for the purpose of emphasis, so that you'll be established in the blessings of his mind, the truth concerning the present state. Hallelujah. And we also know that revelation is progressive, continues to open up and open up and open up. So what is God saying now to us as a people, to us in this church, to this community of faith? God is serious. I tell you what, you will experience speed as never before. If you are the one that God is talking about, say a very big amen to that. Oh, say a very, very big amen to that. The speed of transformation trusting God and asking him, oh God, please, when will, I, when will this thing happen? Talking about visible transformation that people will see and begin to testify. Not because you've told them, but because of what they can see. Hallelujah. When people encounter you, they will know that something has happened. That there is something transformative about you. Hallelujah. Pray in the precious name of Jesus that this will be your encounter and this will be the reality of your life in the precious name of Jesus. So we have many hindrances to this. And I just mentioned a few and then as we do life together and the Holy Spirit is helping us, God will continue to support us and release nuggets of truth from his word so that we'll be admonished in such a way that we're defied so that these blessings can be ours. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Hindrances, number one, hindrances to acceleration could come in form of relationships. Relationships. 
relationship or relationships can slow you down if you are yoked up with the wrong person if you're in the wrong relationship to slow you down second chronicles chapter 24 verse 35 to 37 see what happened to this king jehoshaphat after this this jehoshaphat king of judah joined himself with this king of israel It says, who did wickedly? It said, he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And then they made the ships in Ezion Geba. And Eleazar, the son of Dodava of Maresha, prophesied against the Oshaphat, saying, because thou hast joined yourself to this wicked king Ahaziah, it says, the Lord had broken their works and the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tashis because they came together to do business. People did business, big business, gold, silver, peacocks, apes, and all that, and spices. Tashis was a commercial place. So people would go there, buy all these things, and then come to sell. So this man now joined himself with this person, and I tell you what, they spent so much money in building not only one, but many vessels. The plan was okay. They had done all the feasibility studies. They had the political connections. Nothing, so it seems, before him was an obstacle. They must have sat down and done their feasibility studies, done their calculations, not only that, you're talking about kings. They had the power, political power, military power, everything they had. They also had the money. So they put it together, and this man joined force with this person. The Bible says that, that the ships, they never, never sailed. They were all broken down because God is not sanctioned it. And because it was the wrong relationships. Relationship can slow you down. Relationship also can help you move forward. No wonder why the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 14. It says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath darkness, righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. That is what happens. Wrong relationships. One of the ways in which when, you know, Satan puts a burden to drag you down and not make you move with the speed that God intends for you is for him to put a burden on you. A body. A weight. Have you seen athletes? You see what they wear? Very light. You don't see people running. Wait, who is the fastest man now? Um, 100 meters in the world. Is it, is it still bulls? Right? Oh. You don't, see, you don't see them carrying stuff, they move very light. Even the material they wear, light and easy. Why? Because of speed. And one of the ways in which Satan will put a burden on the child of God is him making sure that it connects with the wrong relationships. I want us to open our Bibles, please, with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 10 from verse 23 and let's decode this. Isaiah 10, 23. Now, I'll give you a picture of this. Hallelujah. 
Maybe we'll start from verse 24. Say, therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, says, O my people in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrians, for he shall smite thee with a rod and lift up his staff against you like the manner of Egypt. And yet for a very little while, this indignation shall cease, and so will my anger and their destruction. And I will stir up a scourge against him, like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Horeb. And as my staff was upon the sea, so would I lift it up in like manner. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thine shoulders, and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Have you seen that? One of the things that God will do in this Sabbath is to stir up his courage against your enemy. Yeah. And everything that has held you down. Uh, let's decode this so you can see what a yoke and the burden is. Because you know those days, they were an agrarian community. So they're using that to describe prophetic pictures, using things, tools, happenings, you know, apparatized, using all those things to describe prophetic understanding of the word of God. Because can I have a picture of a yoke is what is using tying two oxen together like this. Do you see the yoke? So it ties them this and that. So, what they do is that they get two oxen and then they will yoke them. What you see on their neck is a yoke. That's the implement there. Then they will now tie the body. In. That's the body in there. Right? So, you have two oxen. Someone joined into another relationship. So the yoke will make them go to the same place at the same time. They are constrained, const you know, constrained, restricted, patterned to do things together. Now, this is the power of a yoke. So what farmers do, they get the yoke, they have two auctions, then they now place the body. The body is the implement, you know, that metal that plows the ground. These animals can run fast. Why? Because of the body. So, the same way, too, this is what happens. Anytime Satan wants to slow you down, he will yoke you up with people who have messed up. He will yoke you up with people who make you go far. He will yoke you up with someone who is carrying a negative energy. Someone whose life is not in alignment with God. Yoke you up with someone who is cursed. Yoke you up with someone who doesn't have a future ambition. Yoke you up with someone who is a waster. But it's a waste of time and opportunity. So after Satan has now yoked the person, and I was okay, now I'm going to put a body. This guy can't move fast anymore. That is what brings about that slowness. You want to move this way, you can't move this way because there's a yoke. You want to move fast, you can't move fast because there's a body. You have to be dragging, you know, that's the body plows. And some of the bodies, you know, and the yokes, some come, you know, some come in form of iron. Now we're talking about the yoke of the Assyrians. Iron yoke. And the body too. Some of them, when you see them, big, mighty things to plow the ground, made of heavy metal. You can't gain acceleration that way. It's impossible. You'll be moving so slow. Can't believe it. Not only that, 
all your effort, energy that you are deploying will result into very little results. Little output. There is no efficiency. There's a loss of advantage because of the system that Satan has used. And we have many people who are carrying buttons. I told you about those days when we are crazy guys. You know, one of my friends all of a sudden started falling sick and not too much wrong with him. We grew up together. Just fall down and start, you know, vibrating. It was like epilepsy. I'm wondering what happened. Something happened along the line somehow. I remember the day that God helped him. I saw that deliverance in that room I'd never seen before. When the power of God came upon him, I thought he was dead. He was going to rush, and then his stomach started to rumble. I seen all the movement. Something came out. I said, yeah, I'm free, I'm free, light, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And then many years later, I experienced something similar to him. Some young boys wanted to feel cool. University of Abuja, members of the church at that time. So why will you go and just, just, just chill out? Let's go and feel, you know, just to feel good. So they went and they went to a brothel and then paid for services. And then something happened. Because when they brought the case, I was wondering, what was this? said it will fall down and start vibrating and then foam. Just exactly the same thing. Then you have this odor coming out from his body. Exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. And then we had to conduct deliverance and pray. But exactly the same thing. For devils who put a burden on you, he will get you yoked up. Wrong person. Yoked up. And then he will put a burden that will drag you. You are not able to run, not able to move fast. You see this in life, in your business, ministry, and in many engagements of life. But the anointing breaks the yoke. So it shall come to pass in that day, which is today. Because when God is teaching us things like this, He's taking us into dimensions, you know already that 99% of the job has been done. Because He reveals to redeem. That is God for you. God Almighty will stir up His court against your enemies. Burdens on your shoulders. You're not supposed to carry burdens on your shoulders. The shoulders are meant for responsibilities. There's a difference between a burden and a responsibility. If I have to pay school fees for my child, even if dollar is 1,000, by the way, a couple of days ago, we are still praying, God will help us. Dollar rose to 1,440, there about. Even if dollar is $2,000, $2,001 for 2,000 there. God forbid. But as a parent, you still go and pay. Why is the responsibility? Responsibility. So, but a burden is different. A burden is not responsibility, even though it comes on the shoulders. So you see, you shoulder this responsibility. You are even happy doing it for your child. Because it's responsibility. But imagine someone who is paying for disease like cancer, paying the doctors, just like that woman who had issue of blood. 
see many physicians, paid money to different consultants. That is not responsibility. It's a burden. It's one of the things that God will do this morning in this service. He will stir up his scourge against your enemies. Yeah. The burdens will be lifted. Yeah. The yokes shall be destroyed yeah. because of the anointing. Yeah. That is why yokes are put on necks. The neck speaks of control. Speaks of control. You want to go this way, go that way. You can't go where you want to go to. They must go the same way. This, this, it wants to go this way. It wants, it's impossible. There's no dichotomy of movement. Your will, your intentions are restricted and confined by the power of the yoke. It's not a good place to be. Oh, I like freedom. My freedom. And God is bringing about that freedom in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. For someone here whose business has now become a burden, I pray in the precious name of Jesus that God Almighty will visit the foundation of that business, Amen. will visit the foundation of that project. Amen. If you are the one that God is talking about, say a very big amen to that. Amen. Oh, say a very, very big amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why I tell young people, you want to get married, please be careful who you marry. Because marriage is a yoke. You must do due diligence. One of the ways in which Satan can put um, an embargo on your movement is through marriage. The marriage covenant is a yoke. But it's a good one if you marry the right person. The Bible says that two are better than one because they have a greater or a better reward. Isn't it so? For their labor. Two, better than one. It says again, it says, if one will prevail against him, two shall withstand him. Isn't that, isn't that so? Then it goes again and says, a threefold cord is not easily broken. So if one comes against his prevailing, another one joins, you know, things, you get things done quicker. There's power in the marriage covenant. Power. When you marry the right person. When there's congruency when there is harmony, God is involved, you will see speed. Some guys here, you are thinking, oh, you know, you have a desire to gain some certain level of speed, but you are afraid of getting married because of responsibility. Some of you will stay in that place, God forbid, for a long while. If you want it to be done quicker, use the coupling effect of the marriage covenant. Very, very important. It's there in the scriptures. When someone is yoked up to the wrong person, it's a big problem. We have people who are always opposing themselves and proving rights if husband says yes, she will say no. If husband say no, she will say yes. It doesn't work that way. Some people are competing with their wives. Some competing with their husbands. It's not about competition. It's about completeness. It's not about conflict. It's about augmentation. About potentiation. So much power is released to move forward if you are yoked with the right person. 
Yoke yoke with the right person. We've seen people whose lives have been destroyed, that God is now doing the work of redemption in them because of this covenant. Useless, irresponsible wives, irresponsible husbands slow you down. But I'm trusting God in the precious name of Jesus that by the power of redemption, if that is your state, by the power of this word coming forth, God Almighty is giving you a remedy. If you are the one that God is talking about, say a very big amen to that. There's a guy that came one time and then came and met me, my wife. When this guy carries the keyboard, the, the guitar, the boss guitar, and begins to play, you see angels will be dancing. So we're doing life together. So I got married. And then he too, you know, found someone beautiful woman. Beauty. In fact, that lady had never known a man in her life, intelligent, a professional to the core, see pedigree. Somehow, they got together and, and then we're all there, we're happy, you know, doing life together. I thought this guy was normal. Not everybody you see in church is normal. All of a sudden, she came running to us. So I said, what is the problem? My aunt, why? She got a fantastic job, an international job. What is the problem? So my husband asked me to go and resign. To resign you? Say why? He said, because she was earning more than him. I couldn't. What is this? It's crazy. I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't absorb it. I couldn't, ac- I couldn't accommodate it in my, my mind. It's not good for the family. And do you know what? After many years, he too was working in an international company. He lost his job. That job that his wife had many years ago, this was 15 years, is still that job that has taken out all over the world. And it's that job that has sustained her and sustain the family. Why are you competing with your wife? What is the problem? Why are you competing with your husband? What is the problem? One of the things that has helped my wife, I'll give you a testimony, to get to the place where she is today, by the grace of God, I support her. Support her. Make sure I support her. So that we are going to reach to the full fledge of your destiny. Listen, even if it's just for the adventure, let me begin to see things work before me and I'm happy about it. It's okay. You know, in the early days, it wasn't like that. Some men will have died. A pharmacist working for international company, medical rep, from being a medical rep to field force manager and all that. For example, say my entire salary, even if you are working like in a hospital as a pharmacist, maybe 250K at that time, 100,000 naira at that time. They will call my wife. Now listen very carefully. I did first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Pharmacy is tough. And then we did internship. 
and then you have to do NYC before you are released. I even have, because I was so, I was a bad boy in school, you know, so I have clashes with my lecturer because of ladies. So we had, so I had an extra year. Because of this particular girl, I have to go and prostrate and pay, let you please forgive me, have mercy upon me, just let me go. It filled me and filled me and filled me. It won't let me go. So you spent close to eight years before you are released. My wife, English. So they will call her, please come and speak for just one hour. And then she goes there with a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this, that, and she communicates. And then they give her two million naira. So it's in grew. And they'll call her again. Five million. It was growing. Listen, if I was someone who was not secured, I would have died now. <laughs> but you know what? By the time the Lord turned around my But all the while, most people don't know, I'll be the one to teach her. This is what you say. This is what you wear. Don't wear this. Stand this way. Most of those meetings, I'll be there. In the early days, I'll be praying. Always behind the stage. Always behind the stage. Always there. How did she get to walk in the big hotels where she walked? It was me, the Lord used. I hadn't gotten married at that time. And um, I just had a witness in my heart. I said, D, this is what God is saying. Do all your series. Let's have like 10. And God said, I should put it in the car. You know, she was staying at a friend's place. But sometimes we go for marketing. Somebody gave us a product. Thank God for the connection of her excellency at that time. They brought in some thermometers from Russia. This was many years ago. So we're selling. I said, Dad, you know, you can speak very well. You just go and push her. <laughs> so she got this thermometer, is this and that. I tried selling it, nobody was buying from me. <laughs> So, one day, when the Holy Spirit laid it to my heart, and then she came from my friend's place, got into the car, said, where are the CVs? The CVs are in the car. Then I drove, we drove to Agape Pharmacy in Sheraton. And all of a sudden, as we're driving out of the farm, from the premises, I saw this man, big man, huge, my father's friend, a professor of law. This man spoke many languages. This man was so close to my father when he was lecturer in Joss. Anytime he was going to work, very, very cantankerous man. Troublemaker. Fought with VC. Fought with this. Anytime he was going to work, he would pass through the house and he would abuse everybody. <laughs> Say, you, which course are you doing? Theater. Useless boy. Stupid boy. <laughs> you, what are you doing here? You. You abuse everybody in the house. Say, la, la. He spoke Swedish, he spoke German, English, French, five languages. And then, very close to the guy, my father's very tight friend. Life went on, life went on, and somehow everybody grew. And he left Joss 
many, many years ago. And I wasn't even living in Abuja. I was in Electroba in somewhere in Niger Delta, professor, dean, VC. So I was driving out from the hotel. I was one driving. And I saw this guy, big, huge man, tall, bearded. I said, ah, this is professor. I quickly came down and met him. I said, sir, how are you doing? He looked at me and I was wondering. I said, do you remember this face? You know, time had passed. He said, no, 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 who, who are you? I said, my name is Tunde Lani. Ah! How are you? You've grown. Where is your dad? How is your dad and all that? And the next thing he said to me, he said, do you know my friend just sacked everybody here? Do you have somebody that wants to have a job? Do you, are you, do you have someone that wants a job now? I said, yes. He said, give me the CV. I just went to the car. As the Holy Spirit said, I took the CV. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Because you guys have been with me for many years. And the story has been consistent. The gospel truth. So I quickly went, picked up the, the CV. Went and gave it to him. He said, follow me. I was following him. That man was that man. That man is that, that man. That guy was a rascal. <laughs> they were having board meeting. Just went to Ladi Kuali Hall. Opened the door. Swung open the door. People had meetings there. Looked at them. Board meeting. He said, follow me. <laughs> and then took us to the person, the office of the person in charge of the, you know, the PA. I said, take. This is my candidate. And man was wondering, ah, you just left here and I have candidate. <laughs> so he dropped it. And then he left. And the man disappeared. That time there were no mobile, mobile phones. So then they now called her for interview. They had close to about 120,000 was advertised all over the country. If you see applications, over 120,000. When I saw it, I was looking for the man. How will I get him? The man had, done, the man had gone. I didn't know how to contact him. So he's done his own bit. Huh? So she went for the interview. So I had to prepare for the interview. Mathematics, ah. I said, S squared plus S squared equals to 2 S squared. <laughs> so I was teaching that fractions, simultaneous interpretation. I said, sit at S squared plus S squared equals to 2 S squared. I said, S squared plus S squared, 1 S. Ah, why are you always making this? She was frustrating me. I took her time, taught her everything. They said they were going to be asking questions here. Got the question, we sat down working overnight. And I was in that interview, the exam hall, from morning to evening, just praying. When she did it, she passed. This wasn't no influence of anyone. She just passed. And then they had to now call her for the interview. And all the white guys came, consultants, everywhere, the expatriates. She passed. That's how she got her first job. Listen very carefully. What you see, there's somebody behind pushing. I like the way she looks. What's your problem? I'm the one who has sanctioned on it. Everything you see her do. So train her this, train her that, train her this, train her that. It's impossible that my wife will ever say she wants to leave me. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. I've added value to her life. It's about augmentation not potentiation. One time the Lord blessed me many years ago. 
I said, I just want to bless this woman. I brought catalog. I said, pick this car. I think Homer was winning that time. H3. So pick the color you want. Brand new. I ordered it from America, brand new, did declaring everything. I just came and surprised her. Most of you know the testimony. Oh, yeah, orange. Remember the blue? Yeah. Fire orange. Yeah. Brand new. Very good woman. Good woman. So, when you're getting, when you get, so, the, the, the achievements, your achievement will come galloping. Speed will come. No competition. For what? It's about completeness. About augmentation. I don't know why the Lord has led my heart even to, to go this way. I ask God wants to address some certain things. What you marry, you carry. That's a very powerful yoke, you know. But it's a good one. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. One will chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. It's good. So mind the kind of relationship, the kind of yoke, the nature of the yoke. Do you know even serving Jesus also is like that? Jesus himself said, he said, my yoke and then my body is light. It's so wonderful. So the nature of the yoke will depend on the persons that are involved. Now my prayer is this for someone who is married or someone who is about to or someone who will that God Almighty will bring about some certain redemption so that your life will begin to move very quickly and fast. And for someone who is single we thank God for the plan of redemption this same God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think according to his power that works in us. There's also redemption. Praise the name of the Lord. The power of relationships Uh, just, just very briefly, please. Very briefly. Let's bow down and pray. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you don't know him and you want to say, Pastor Tunde, I want you to pray for me. I want to know this Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to give my life to him. If you are here this morning and you want me to pray for you, wherever you are, please don't lift up your hands before we do, because we are going to take two prayers before the church closes. I'd like to take just two prayer points. So wherever you are, you want to say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to submit to his lordship. I want to give my life to him. Just wave your hand wherever you are. I'd like to pray with you. Thank you. Just wave, 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 wave boldly. Wherever you are, thank you. Just wave, 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 wave. Wherever you are. I want to give a light to Jesus. Just wave. Just give her a card. They give him a card. Give her a card. Wherever you are, if you are, if you are upstairs, just wave. I want me to pray for you today. Begin to experience the power of aspiration in your life. Thank you, King of Glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, Jesus, I come to you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior this morning. Come into my life. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
So we're going to do some prayers this morning. Please just wait after service. Just stay with her after service. Let's do this prayer together. And then ushers after service, you can usher them out. How many of us are ready to pray? Just, just two prayer points. Here. Yeah. Now, I want you to pray. I want to pray with the whole of your heart. I want to pray fervently. Whatsoever it is that is slowing you down must give way. That amen sounds paralyzed. Every unprofitable relationship must be cut off from you. From today, you move fast and you will go very far. If you are the one that God is going to say a very big amen to that. Now lift up both hands and say, Father, say, Father, have mercy upon me. Forgive me, O God, where I have heard. Go ahead and begin to pray. We have entered into error in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Where I have offended you, O God. Where I have made mistakes. Father Lord, have mercy upon me in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody's not praying. Pray, 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 pray. Lift up your voice and pray in the precious name of Jesus. Rabaliske fiendo kobroko seke taya brada ma onde kebredos ki falanda kafiati salah. Lift up your voice and cry out unto him. Ah, say, Father, purge me, O King of glory. Cleanse me, O God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Wash me, O King of glory, in Jesus' mighty name. My Father, my Father. Rabaloski fiende ke brodoski salati. Thank you, King of glory, in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody say a very big amen to that. Let somebody say a very big amen to that. Let's say, say, bring him into that. Listen very carefully. The yokes can be broken and burdens can be lifted in the precious name of Jesus. You will say in Jesus' mighty name. Say in the name of Jesus. 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 Say by the blood of Jesus. Say by the blood of Jesus. Say by the blood of Jesus. I command, uh, let every body, oh my God, be lifted in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, let every yoke be oh, broken. Uh, go ahead and begin to pray. Rabalanda kabreke seketaya bradam. Whatsoever it is uh, that is controlling my destiny uh, against the purposes of God, uh, what are you waiting for? Uh, I rebuke you. Uh, I break you in the precious name of Jesus. Every burden of death, what are you waiting for? Be lifted by fire. Every burden of disease, be lifted by fire. Every burden of sorrow, be lifted by fire. Every burden of affliction, what are you waiting for? In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, be lifted in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray. Let God Almighty stir up a scourge even against your afflictors. Stir up a God. Stir up an indignation even against your enemies. Balanda kapaleya, rebeles kebredeya, ma onde kefiatam. Every structure of Satan against my life. What are you waiting for? I rebuke you. I be lifted in the precious name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Badoski selanda kapiatam. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yokes are meant to be broken. Whatsoever it is that is controlling you against God's will for you, I declare it broken this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Whatsoever power it is that is controlling your movement, controlling your articulations, controlling, oh my God, your speed, even against God's knowledge, against God's mandate, against God's counsel. I destroy it right now in the precious name of Jesus. You will pray and say in the precious name of Jesus. 
Say in the precious name of Jesus. Say in the precious name of Jesus. Say in the precious name of Jesus. Say by the blood of Jesus. Say by the blood of Jesus. Say by the blood of Jesus. I free myself from every yoke in the precious name of Jesus. By the power of the anointing. Let everything controlling my wife, controlling my father, controlling my sister, controlling my daughters, controlling my sons, controlling my business, even against your desire, against God's pattern. Let it be broken down in the precious name of Jesus. Let the power of unprofitable relationship be broken down. Let every linkage to unprofitable relationship be broken right now. Every evil tie, every evil affiliation, every evil association, Shebalanda Kapale, every oh my God, unproductive, unfruitful Lana, Yapalanda Kapale, relationship, let it give way. In the precious name of Jesus, it's time for me to move on. It's time for me to move with speed. It's time for me. This is the year of my acceleration. Shebalosh Kiki and Kapaleya. Lift up your voice everywhere. Everyone praying. Baleske, Rebelenda, Makalanda, Yekedende Kefiataya, Yoprodos Kisalaya, Maande Kefilatiya. Every association, every link, oh my God, every tie entered into consciously or unconsciously. Rabalanda Kafia, Zolondo Kobredeske Salam, Maande Kefilaski Salam. I break loose. I break loose from it. In the precious name of Jesus, Babalanda Kabaleya, every controlling power over my destiny, every controlling power over my work, every controlling power over my business, every controlling power over my movement in life. What are you waiting for? Receive the fire of God. I deliver myself as a gazelle. I deliver myself. I walk out my salvation with fear and trembling by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power in the name of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. Every evil curse, Malanda Kapalam. Every evil altar controlling me, controlling the outcome of my life against my wish, against God's dream and visions for me. Ah, I free myself. Go ahead, pray everywhere. Rebeloski, Babalanda Kapaleske Sira, Oyimbrendeske Filata, Malanda Kapaleski Kia. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, listen very carefully. We had contact 10, contact 7. Where we are praying for seven hours. Now, how many of us were at that meeting? You could see the many testimonies that came up from it. There's a testimony about, about this our church member here. His life was standstill, on a standstill. Nothing was moving. So we're praying this prayer like this. One of the things that happens. When we come like this and pray, we generate anointing. It's called the corporate anointing. That's why I see testimony will just abound because of the corporate anointing. How wonderful, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil upon the head of Aaron that ran to his beard, down to his skirt. 
Then he goes again and describes it. The dew upon Mount Hermon, the dew upon the Mount Zion, or the mountain of Jerusalem, is like an anointing, so powerful. Now, people understand how to navigate the spirit realm. They know how to make use of opportunities like this. So that day, that brother prayed. Boom! Something happened. After that, things were moving so quickly. It was almost even getting beyond his control. Got a call, said, Pastor, please. Young guy. Pastor, please, I've not finished building my house. After that meeting, things were moving so fast. Pastor, I cannot believe it. Please come, 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 come. Come, a young guy. Things were moving. Listen, there was an eruption. That is what God wants to do here this morning. Yeah. Whatsoever it is that is keeping you in the place where you are right now, against God's will for you, is here by George in Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your voice and say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I receive the power of acceleration. I move forward with acceleration. Go ahead and begin to pray. Somebody is not praying, pray. Move forward in the precious name of Jesus. Academically move forward. That project must proceed. Go ahead and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Let the power of stagnation give way. Let the power of delay give way. Let the power of stagnation give way. Let the power of delay be broken by the power and strength and might of acceleration. Let things begin to move quickly in succession. Go ahead and pray quickly, quickly. Baduski solondo kobredoski filete, jeles ke brada ma onde ke fila, yegredes ke file. Lift up your voice and pray. Declare it in the precious name of Jesus. Enough of stagnation. Enough of delay. We must redeem the time in the precious name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Baonda Cabrenoski Filete. Thank you, King of Glory. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. May I send to someone here? That project has received strength. Things for you are moving quickly. Quicker than you ever thought in the name of Jesus. God Almighty has gone ahead of you. This will be the most, the mo oh my God, this will be the most exciting moment of your life. In the precious name of Jesus. The power of delay is broken over you. The power of stagnation is broken over you. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. The strength of prolongation is brought to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you right now in Jesus mighty name into the joy of your Lord. I release you in the name of Jesus into your season of acceleration acceleration into your purpose acceleration into your mandate oh my god financial acceleration marital acceleration in the precious name of jesus christ whatsoever is working against you will begin to work for you in the name of jesus policies have been broken in your favor, procedures have been broken. In your favor, protocols.
protocol has been disabled in your favor. God Almighty has collapsed time for you. Suddenly, 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 your miracle will appear suddenly. Oh my God. Your testimony shall be sudden. Your promotion shall be sudden. Your elevation shall be sudden. My God, my God, are you trusting God for scholarship? Receive a sudden one in Jesus' mighty name. Everything is working in your favor. If you believe it, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are yea and amen. They are yes and amen. I declare yes and amen over your life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Every obstacle before you has been brought down. The hindrances have been nullified. Lift up your voice and shout free hallelujah in a row. What is someone still waiting for? Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of power. Shout a shout of sudden testimony. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of triumph. Shout a shout of acceleration. 2024. 2024 acceleration acceleration so it shall be unto you in the name of Jesus as we have spoken in his ears so he has done for you in the name of Jesus let somebody praise the name of the Lord everywhere <laughs>